Welcome back. In this segment, we will discuss some very important terminology that will be helpful during most of the topics that we will discuss in this module. We have two options uh, with respect to holding the punch and die on a press. So as we discussed that we can either directly hold the punch to the ram. So this is the ram of the press. So punch can be held here under this ram and the die can be attached to the bed. So this is one of the options. The second option is to use die sets. Punches and dies can be mounted on standard die sets. The guide pins, uh, these pins are the guide pins. They are also called guide posts, provide alignment between the die holder and the punch holder. So this is the punch holder and this is the die holder. So punch is attached to the punch holder uh, this is the punch holder, so it is attached here under this punch holder on the bottom of this punch holder and die is attached here at the, at the top of the die holder. So what we achieve using die sets is better alignment of the punch and die. The guide bushings are mounted in the punch holder and slide over the guide pin. So uh, this is the guide bushing and this is the guide pin. The flange provides a means of clamping the die shoe or the die holder to the bolster plate or to the bed of the press. So this assembly is attached uh, to the press. So something like this, that this assembly as a whole will be attached here. So this part of the punch holder will attach to the ram and this uh, die holder will be attached to the bed. So this whole assembly will fit here in this area. And we will see it with the help of a video as well. Now the benefit of using die sets is that once you have used a pair of punch and die, you can detach it from the die set and attach another uh, punch and die for the next operation. So these are the main parts of a die set. So at the top is the shank that is attached to the ram of the press. We have the punch holder. Uh, we have the die holder, this one. Then we have the guide pins and guide bushing. So these guide pins are fixed and they are attached, they are press fit with the die holder. So this guide bushing, the pair of guide bushings in this case slides over the guide pins. And this flange is used to hold the uh, die holder to the bed or the a bolster plate. So this is the flange. So this is the flange. Now this is the shut height of the die set. That is the height from the top of the punch holder to the bottom of the die holder. So that is the shut height of the die set. Now these views are really important for our course. And whenever you are designing a punch and a die, you have to show their views on this uh, standard. So you have to show four views. So the top view of the punch is shown here. The top view of the die is shown on this view. And the front view of punch and die is shown on this view and the side view is shown here. So uh, this view will show the punch only, this view will show the die only, and these two views, in this case A and B will show both punch and die. So I repeat that this is the top view of the punch, the top view of the die, and the front view of both punch and die will be shown here and the side view will be shown here. So this is very important uh, drawing. This is a very important standard actually that you have to use throughout this course. So I repeat this point here again, that the top view of the die holder is shown in the drawing on the left. It is shown looking down at the die opening with the punch holder removed. The punch holder is shown to the right of the die shoe, but rotated 180 degree from the top view of the die. It is as if there were a hinge between the two views and the die set were opened like a sandwich. 
front and side views are used for clarity. So top view of the die holder is shown on the left, this one. It is shown looking down at the die opening with the punch holder removed. The punch holder is shown on the right. This is the punch holder. Uh, it is shown on the right of the die holder, but rotated 180 degree from the top view of the die. So it is just like there were a hinge between the two views and the die sets were opened like a sandwich. So here you will show the top view of the die. Here you will show the top view of the punch. And again, so this is top view of punch holder rotated 180 degree, front view of the die set. So here will be the front view of the punch and here will be the front view of the die. And here will be the side view of both punch and die. So this uh, standard is very important and we will need it repeatedly. It is better to show the section view of the punch and die along with these four views, something like this. This is one of the options actually. So you could see the punch holder here is shown at the top position along with the punch. That is a cutting punch in this case. So this is the punch. This is the punch holder shown at the top position. This is the shank that is further attached to the ram of the press. You could see the guide pins. Uh, and uh, the guide bushings as well. And the right view, right half of this view is showing the bottom position of the stroke. So again, this is the punch holder. This is the punch. And you could see the die holder, the starting strip, the die itself. So this is the die, this much. And this one at the bottom is the die holder. So apart from those four views, this section view helps us to better visualize the, uh, the shape and the orientation of punch and die. This is optional, but if you use it, it will provide better clarity. You could use a views like this as well. So again, you could see this is the uh, upper uh, shank as was here. So this is the shank and then you could see this punch holder here, then we have the punch, then we have the die holder, the die and another important element in the case of cutting dies is the stripper, we will explain it later. You could see the guide bushings and the guide pins as well. So a view like this or this in combination with these four views does provide us all the necessary information about the punch and die that is being used in a certain operation. So there are different designs of die sets available. There is a complete chapter on die set design in Fundamentals of Die Design. That is a wonderful book on die design. So you can refer to that chapter for more details on different styles of die sets. Another important term related to sheet metal presses is the tonnage. The tonnage of a press is the force that the press ram is able to exert safely. The tonnage of hydraulic press is the piston area multiplied by the oil pressure in the cylinder. Now, th these uh, next three points are important. The tonnage is varied by changing the oil pressure. So tonnage of a hydraulic press can be varied. The tonnage of a mechanical press is constant and cannot be varied as in the hydraulic press. And the tonnage of a mechanical press is calculated when the ram is near the bottom of its stroke. So the tonnage of, uh, of a mechanical press is uh, less when the uh, ram is at the top, it increases and it is maximum at the bottom of the stroke. So maximum force is applied and near the bottom of the stroke. The tonnage of a mechanical press is approximately equal to the shear strength of the crankshaft metal multiplied by the area of crankshaft bearings. So in order to perform a certain operation, we first need to calculate how much force is required and then select the corresponding uh, press that can uh, supply that required force. 
Another important term is the stroke. The stroke of a press is the distance of ram movement from its up position to its uh, down position. So let's assume that that ram in this case is at its top position. So how much can it move downward? So that distance in inches, this distance is the stroke of the press. The strokes per minute is the speed of the press. How many strokes can it, it apply in a, in a minute? So that is actually the reciprocating movement, uh, downward and then back to its uh, original position. So that is one stroke. So how many strokes per minute can be applied by a press? The seam is the C frame or the low tonnage uh, presses, these are small light presses like the one is shown in the figure, have the highest strokes per minute of all press types. The stroke is constant on a mechanical press and the stroke is adjustable on hydraulic press. So you can start the stroke of hydraulic press um, literally uh, from any position of the stroke. Another important term is the shut height of a press is the distance from the top of the bed to the bottom of the slide, indicating the maximum die height that can be accommodated. So this distance from the uh, top of the bed to the bottom of the slide. So this is the bottom of the slide and this is the top of the bed. So this is the shut height of the press. So please note that this is different than the stroke. Stroke is the distance that the ramp can move downward. So that distance is the stroke, but the gap or the space between uh, the bottom of the ram and the top of the bed is the shut height of the press. The shut height of a die set we have already seen is the distance from the top of the punch holder to the bottom of the die holder when the die is in its closed position. So this is the shut height of a die set from the top of the punch holder to the bottom of the die holder. So the shut height of the die must be equal or less than the shut height of the press so that we can hold the die set uh, on the press. Now we will go through this terminology with, with the help of a video. Uh, the link of this video is given in the description so you could see here uh, this is the punch holder shown almost in red color. This is the die holder. And uh, you could see, uh, you could actually visualize uh, the uh, position of the punch and the die. So these are the guide bushings. These are the guide pins. And at the bottom of this punch holder will be the punch and Somewhere over here, it will be the die, and you could see that the sheet is being fed from right to left. In fact, it is from, uh, from left to right. So, this is the ram of the press, the punch holder. And you could see here the reciprocating motion of the ram. Here, you could see the flywheel. This is the reciprocating motion of the ram. And just at the bottom of the ram, this is the punch holder, this is the punch, die holder, die, guide bushings, and guide pins. Now, the reciprocating motion, the maximum motion of the, of the ram from top to bottom is the stroke uh, of the press. Now this distance between the bottom of the ram to the top of the bed, somewhere from here to here, when the ram is in its topmost position is the shut height of the press. And when this die is at the bottom, this sorry punch holder is at the bottom, that is the distance between the top of the punch holder and the bottom of the die holder, that is the shut height of the die set. And the Strokes per minute is the speed of this press. So you could see that there is a, a certain time required for one stroke. So how many strokes can the press apply in a minute? So that is the speed of the press or uh, strokes per minute. So stroke 
strokes per minute and shut eye. These are three different things. 